So a register has all these connections, and so in order to test it, we've got to connect some stuff up to it and, and kind of play with it and see if it behaves the way that we think it will. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a, another breadboard just with eight LEDs on it and use this to, to kind of see what our bus is doing. Um, so what I'll do is I'll hook the, the bus connections up to, to these LEDs. And of course we want to make sure they're connected up in, in order. And so now our, our, our eight bus connections are connected up to these eight LEDs and they're connected uh, in order here so we can see what our, what our bus is doing. And of course we also want to connect the, the ground uh, of these LEDs um, over to, to our board here so we have a common ground so that our LEDs will work. Uh, and so now we should be able to, to power this up and see, see what it does. So I'll connect our power in here and it looks like uh, everything is, is all zeros, which is, I don't know, maybe interesting. Uh, um, you know, these are, these are D flip-flops here, so they could start in either state. So yours, some of yours might start on, might start off. We don't know. Um, I'll set the enable to high, and I'll set the, uh, the load as high as well, because, uh, you know, these are these, are these uh, sort of inverse signals, remember? So they're, they're inverted, so, uh, you know, setting enable to high means we're not enabled, and setting load high means we're not loading. And then we'll, we'll bring them low to, to actually uh, turn those signals on. Uh, and then the last thing we have is our is our clock here, and I'm going to hook that up to our clock circuit that we built in the previous video. So we'll just hook the clock up just like that, um, and then I also want to hook the the power uh, connections from our clock up to to this board. So we're powering our our clock, and there we go. Now our clock is is flashing away there. Um, and so now we can start to test this. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to see what happens when we bring our load pin from high to low. So in other words, we're, we're telling our register to go ahead and load whatever's on the bus. And now there's, there's nothing connected to the bus. Um, and so it'll be sort of interesting to see what happens here. So if we bring that low, we see that when the next time the clock went high, everything, all of our, all of our bits in our register went high. And you might wonder, well, why is that happening? There's nothing on our bus. These are all off. Why would these, why would these come on? Well, because there's nothing on the bus at all. Um, these pins aren't high or low. There's nothing driving, driving our bus. There's, you know, there's no, no inputs here. Um, this is going to, the, the registers are going to default, you know, any, any TTL chip typically will default to a high input. If you don't connect the input, uh, it, it defaults to high because there's typically a, a pull up resistor, uh, inside the chip there on the input. And so that's just what we're seeing, is we're seeing that, you know, since there's nothing connected, uh, they just show up as high. Uh, but what we can do is we can now take our load pin and bring that high again, which, which turns the load uh, off. And now we can take our enable and see what happens when we, when we enable this by bringing enable from high to low. And we see when we bring that low, we see the output. So we have all ones in, stored in our register. And when we enable the register, we can see that enabling it outputs the contents of the register to the bus, which is exactly what we want the, uh, the enable to do. Now we can try something else. We can try uh, inputting a value. And, and the way we can do that is, you know, we saw that by default we're getting ones. So what we could do is we could just connect some of these bits here to, to ground. And uh, that'll, you know, I don't know, connect, connect these bits here and maybe, maybe we'll do one more. We just connect this bit over here to ground. And now, if we try to load what's on the bus, we should see three of these uh, turn off. And indeed we do. Um, and so now we have that value on the, on the bus. And so now if we change that value so these aren't, oh, whoops, we're still, we're still loading, that's why. Yeah, so we're still loading, so it pulled in that new value when I, when I disconnected these. So let me reconnect these. Normally, normally the load would only be, would only be active for, uh, for one clock tick. Um, so the load is active and then the load goes inactive, so we take it high. And so now we can change what's on the bus and we store that value in the register, which is, which is what the register should be doing. And then if the register needs to output that back to the bus, we can use the enable to do that and we get that same value back out on the bus. So it looks like our register is working. Now, where things get interesting is when we have multiple registers, and in fact, for our computer, we're going to need to build a couple registers. So here I've got a second register built exactly the same way as the first one, um, and we can hook it up to the bus as well. So I'm going to disable that bus, and I'm going to hook 
I'm going to hook the second register up to the bus in the same way. So we've got both registers now hooked to the bus, and of course we'll want to make sure we uh, connect our power here as well. So let me connect our power rails here. And then we'll connect the, the two boards here so that we've got power going everywhere that it needs to go. So we've got our power hooked up to everything. Uh, so now we have two registers. And so this is actually kind of interesting because now we have a value in this register and we have another value in this register down here. This is this value that we stored there before and this is just all zeros. Oh, and of course we want to hook our clock from our second register up to our, to our main clock here. We got our clocks hooked up, everything's hooked up. So now what we can do is we could actually do a register transfer. We could enable the top register and that puts the value out on the bus. And then we could load into our second register. And then, boom, when the next clock cycle, we load that down here. And then we can turn that off, and we can turn off our top register. And now both of these have this value stored in them. And then now the bottom register could output that to the bus. And then some other register could read it, or the top register could read it again. And so now we've got two registers here connected to the common bus. Either of them can output their value to the bus. Either of them can read a value from the bus. So now in total for our computer, we're going to need to actually build three registers. Uh, for, for the computer. So we've got the A register, the B register, which are just like this, and then we also need to build an instruction register, which is very similar. Um, there's a couple differences with it. One is um, I've just basically built it the opposite direction, and that's just because physically the way that we're going to lay out the, all of the boards, uh, we're going to put the bus in the middle, um, and it's just easier if the 74LS245 chip, this, this buffer chip, is towards the middle of the board. And so these are going to be on the right side, this is going to be on the left side. Uh, and so just having this kind of reversed um, is, is a little bit easier. And so you can see these are, these are basically, you know, if you look at the A and the B registers that we built here, they're, they're mirror images of the instruction register, which is, which is this board down here. Otherwise, it's pretty much identical except for one other change, which is that the, the most significant four bits, so these, these top four bits, are a little bit different in that uh, they are not output back onto the bus. And so you'll see here, there's only four green wires, so only the, the least significant green wires are connected to the LS245. Um, and so if we look back here, that's just, you know, these, these four wires for the most significant bit, they just aren't connected. And the reason for that is that rather than being output um, back to the bus, they're going to go into the instruction decoder, and we'll, we'll get into that in future videos. Um, but for, for the instruction register, only four of the bits are going to are going to be output when we when we enable it. Uh, but otherwise, otherwise it's pretty much the same. And so again, we can we can hook this up as well. So we've got the power here. I can hook that over to the power for everything else. Um, and so that's that. And then of course I can hook the bus up to our common bus here. And there we are. So our bus is hooked up, power is hooked up. Oh, we do, we do need clock. Make sure that's hooked up. So our clock is, is here. And that should hook up to our... No, it doesn't quite reach, but we can... That's okay. We can just connect it over here, as long as all of our clocks are connected. There's these white wires. So our clock's connected, everything's connected. So what we could do is we could, uh, we could go ahead and output one of these registers. Let's take the B register, and we can output that. Uh, and then we want to input that over here on our instruction register, let's say. So let's see which one of these, this would be the, the load. So if we take that low on the next clock cycle, yep, we've now inputted that value. And so now we can stop outputting that. Uh oh, oh, <laughs> right. We've gotta make sure once we read it in that we are no longer loading. And now it's safe to uh, take that off the bus and it'll, it'll stay there. Uh, and so now we have that in there. Now, remember the one difference here is we don't have these, these top four bits hooked up, the blue, the blue LEDs. That's why I did them different colors, is they're a little bit different. The blue LEDs aren't hooked up to the output. So if we enable like this, we see only the, the, the lowest four LEDs uh, come on because the blue ones aren't hooked up. These, are, these blue LEDs are going to be hooked to another part of the computer for the instruction decoder because this is the instruction register and these four these four bits are going to have the instruction. They're going to go to the instruction encoder. These four bits are, are you know, typically used for an address or something, and they, they could go back out on the bus. Uh, don't worry if none of that makes sense. Um, 
the point is we just don't want to connect these these top four bits for for one of our registers here and so if we want we could if we read this back in to somewhere else we're you know let's say we load this into the a register now you know we end up with with that same value there um, and then we can stop loading that in the a register and then we can stop outputting that on the bus and so now there's nothing on the bus and so now you know, I mean, we could load this from the A register to the B register. We output it on the A register, it goes out to the bus. And on the B register, we change our load pin here and it loads it in there. And so you can see we're getting these, these bus transfers. Each, each of our registers, it appears, is able to output to the bus. And each of the registers is able to input something from the bus. So it looks like we've got our, our three registers built. The A register, the B register, and the instruction register.